everybody. I'm Sonia from Blackstone Designs, and today we're going to be making this super beginner-friendly single crochet dishcloth with a little twist. You will need 100% cotton yarn. The samples you see here are made with peaches and cream that you can find right at Walmart. You're also going to need an H8 5.0 millimeter crochet hook, some scissors, and you will want a yarn needle so that you can weave in the end when we're finished. Today, I will be using Loops and Threads Capri yarn for tutorial purposes only. You wouldn't want to use this yarn for your actual dishcloth, but this yarn has really great stitch definition, which will make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use this just for this video. So let's get started. First, we're going to start with a chain 26. Okay, so now that we have our chain, we're going to flip it over so that we can work into the back bumps across this chain. When you're working with single crochets, there's always one extra chain as your turning chain. So you have 26 chains, but you're only going to have 25 stitches. So we skip that first chain because that's considered the turning chain and we move to the next one. And again, we're working in the back bump. So we're going to insert our hook, not in that first one, but in the second. So it's called the second chain from the hook. And then you yarn over, pull through the chain, yarn over again, pull through both loops on hook. That's how you work a single crochet. And we're going to do that all the way across this chain. Make sure that you pinch to pin it down as you're working. This will help you maintain an even tension. So insert into the back bump, drop your loop, yarn over, draw through both loops. Insert hook into the back bump, yarn over, draw up a loop, Yarn over again, draw through both loops. Now we have reached the end of our chain and have 25 stitches. So now we need to turn the project so we can work back across these stitches and keep building the project up. And a turning chain it's simple, it's just a chain one, so you yarn over and draw up a loop, and that's it. And now you've chained one and you just turn the project over. Now, with a single crochet, you can work into the first stitch because this turning chain does not count as its own stitch. In some projects, you will see that the chain does also count as a stitch, but with single crochet, it does not. So you're going to work into this first gap. And if you look at the top, similar to a chain stitch, you will see these little V's. This is the front loop, which is the one that's closest to you. And this is the back loop, which is the one that's furthest away from you. So with a single crochet, you're inserting your hook in this little gap that's underneath both of those loops. So insert your hook under the front and back loops, yarn over, draw up a loop, and pull through. And you're gonna do that in each of the 25 single crochets that you just made into that chain. Okay, now that we're at the end of our second row, we're going to do the same thing. Chain one and turn the project over. And you will repeat this for rows three, four, and five for a total of five single crochet rows. So it's all single crochet rows. Now, once again, at the end of the fifth row, we're going to chain one and turn. Now the sixth row gets a little tricky, but it's still very easy to do. And this will allow you to practice some of these beginner stitches that you've learned. So again, we're gonna work a single crochet into that first space. 
but this time we're going to do a chain two at the top of that single crochet. Then we're going to skip the next space. So these front and back loops up here in that little space underneath, we're actually not gonna work into that. We're gonna move over to the third space and we're gonna work a single crochet in there. And then again, chain two at the top of that single crochet, skip the next one, which would be the fourth stitch and work a single crochet into the fifth stitch. So we're going to chain two at the top of each single crochet and skip one space all the way across. This will put your last single crochet into the very last single crochet from row five. Now, once again, we do the chain one and we turn. For row seven, we're gonna put single crochets in the single crochets and we're going to skip over the chain two space. So we're gonna do the single crochet, chain two, skip that chain two space. So you're not gonna work into those two chains at all and over to the next single crochet. This might seem a little tricky. So let's check out the anatomy of this stitch work. The first two loops the very edge of your row, that's from your single crochet. So underneath those two loops is your single crochet. So then that means the next two V's that you see are the chains that you made. So single crochet, chain one, chain two. That means the next V that you see is the next single crochet. And if you look under, you can see a little gap, the little hole in the single crochet that you previously made you're working in that space. And then skip these next two Vs, which is chain one, chain two, and work into this next space. So this is what that looks like. Single crochet in the first single crochet, chain two, skip the two chains, work into the next single crochet. Chain two, skip those two chains, work into the next single crochet. Chain two, skip the chain space, single crochet. Okay, and again, chain one and turn, and then you will repeat row seven, which was the row we just worked, across until you have 10 rows. So you have five rows of solid single crochet and five rows of the single crochet, chain two, skip one, or single crochet, chain two, skip the chain space. Okay, now we're at the end of row 10. So now we need to get back to making some solid single crochet rows. How do we do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You're going into your single crochet into the single crochet and then you're going to single crochet into that chain space. So you're not gonna work in the chains themselves, you're gonna work in the gap made underneath the chain two. Single crochet in that single crochet, and then in the chain two space. Single crochet in the single crochet, and then in that chain space. Okay, now we want this to be five solid single crochet rows. So we're just repeating these instructions. And then after we have the five solid single crochet rows, we're gonna repeat the instructions for the chain space rows. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two. At the end, we will finish off with 
five more solid rows. So we have the solid single crochet rows and the single crochet with chains. Solid single crochet rows, single crochet with chains, solid single crochet rows. This will give us 25 total rows. And then I will show you how to put a nice clean edge on it and make it a pretty little dishcloth. And yours should look similar to this after 25 rows. The solid, the single crochet with chains, solid single crochet, single crochet with chains, solid single crochet. But as you can see, we have this like bumpy rigid side and we would like to clean that up so it's nice and flat and smooth like the top and the bottom are. So this is what we do. When that last stitch of the last row, we're gonna chain, but we're not going to turn, not turn it completely anyway. We're going to turn it slightly so we're facing the side edge. Now, you will want to work in the end of every row. This is row 25. So we wanna break right into that, right into the middle of the V. The front side of a single crochet has the little V. So you wanna get in between what's called the legs of the single crochet. Get right in there. And then make a single crochet. Then insert your hook into the next row, single crochet. Third, well, that would be 23rd row, 22nd row, 21st row. And you just wanna keep working like that down the whole side edge. Just getting in between the legs of the single crochets. Okay, now we're back down to row one, which was our starting row. So we're gonna put our single crochet in there. So then we're going to turn, we don't need to chain here. We're going to turn the project so that now the bottom or the first row is facing the top. And we're going right into that first stitch right there. Okay, then turn the project again to face the other side. That was the last stitch on the bottom. Here's the end of that first row. So you want to get in. Before I get too far, I will show you that's that new edge, nice and clean, opposed to this rigid, messy edge. Okay, and one more slight turn, and we're gonna work back across the top. And then we're going to join this in that original single crochet that we made, the very first one we made going down the side. Okay, so now we're going to join this, this loop here with that first stitch going down that edge. And we join this with what is called a slip stitch. You make the slip stitch by inserting the hook under the two loops and yarning over, pulling it through, but you don't draw up a loop onto the hook like you would to start a single crochet you actually continue with that loop and pull it through the one that was on your hook. So let me show you that one more time. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull the yarn through, but continue pulling through that loop on the hook. And that's it. Then we will clip the yarn and weave the tail. You want a good length when you finish this off because this needs to be weaved in. The more you have to weave in, the stronger the hold will be so the tail doesn't come loose So this later. is how we finish. Now we've done our slip stitch. We're gonna grab this tail 
and we're gonna do like a slip stitch again, sort of. Pull it right through that loop and then just pull it down tight. And we're going to thread the needle. Then the best way to do this to hide that knot is to go back between that V, that last single crochet or slip stitch that you made in the corner. And then you're just going down in between the stitches. And I'll pop it back out the other side. See how you can't really see my needle? That's where you want that tail to go, right in the middle in between the stitches. So pull that right through. And then it takes the knot with it. You can do a little bit of fluffing. Straighten out your corner, and there you go. Then you're going to want to weave going horizontally. And we're going to come back through the same way. And it's really helpful if you can break into this working yarn that you have, usually. The yarn I have, you can see all the plies. With a different brand of yarn, it typically stays twisted up pretty good. And so you come back through that and weave through the stitches kind of in a different pattern that you came in. That way it really locks it in place. Okay. And then we're going to come back up towards that corner. Remember, I'm coming out of the back side. So this was the corner we started in. And we want to work back up towards that corner. Weave in and out, break through the strands, lock in that tail by weaving the yarn into itself as well. And that's it, just a little L on the corner. And then done. And that's your dishcloth. When it gets wet, it's actually going to stretch. So this will be a little bigger than it looks right now. And you'll be able to see your chain spaces a little better too. So it's like a little mesh grid in there. Now you have a beginner single crochet dishcloth. Thank you for watching my video. If you'd like to see more from Blackstone Designs, you can find me on every major social media network. Happy crocheting!